So OpenAI just released Search GPT, but guys, is it worth the hype? In this video, I'm gonna be comparing search results for different types of queries between Search GPT, Perplexity AI, and also Google's AI overview. So be sure to stick around to the very end. So if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Ryan and my mission is to help you navigate the overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. And if you wanna know my favorite AI tools and prompts that I use for marketing and content creation, be sure to get my free AI marketing essentials guide. You can find a link for this below the video, but now let's get back to this comparison between Search GPT, Google AI overviews and Perplexity AI. So first of all, if this is your first time hearing about Search GPT, I would recommend watching my video here that I published the other day. I'll leave a link to this in the video description below. This just gives a high level overview of what Search GPT is and just my first reaction. So be sure to check that out first. Also, I am subscribed to ChatGPT Plus, and as of this video recording, you do have to be a member of ChatGPT Plus, Teams, or Enterprise in order to access the Search GPT functionality. If you signed up for the waitlist on Search GPT and you're a free user and you have access to it, be sure to let me know in the comments. I want to know if that's the case. I'm also a member of Perplexity Pro, and I'm also just using traditional Google search with AI overviews turned on. So what I'm gonna do in this first example, I'm gonna make it very simple. Now, if you've never done this before and you're a member of ChatGPT+, all you need to do is start a new chat and you'll see this little icon here, search the web. Be sure to click that and we've now enabled search mode. So I'm gonna ask something news related, recency based. What is the top AI news today? And I'm gonna compare the results across the three different search engines. So while it's doing that, I'm gonna make sure Perplexity Pro or the Pro search is turned on. So I'm gonna click that. And then I'm gonna to come to Google and then I'm gonna type in the same exact prompt, copy and paste. So right away, let's start here since we're already on Google, you'll notice the AI overview. So it says, here are some recent AI news stories, text to video technology, hybrid AI, uh, MIT, College of Computing. And then it has some actual stories over here. Uh, so I'm not sure this is actually recent by any means, other AI trends include. So I'm not sure if this is actually accurate or not. Now, if I click Google News, that'll give me some recent stuff as far as I'm aware. Yeah, 10 hours ago, uh, even this isn't really recent. Three weeks ago, three days ago. Uh, so not great when it comes to an AI overview for asking Google, what is the top AI news today? I'm just looking for a quick bullet point list and now it's saying it's not even available for the search. If I look at perplexity, here it says, based on the search results, here are the top news stories for today, October. So I like how it put the date there. OpenAI launches ChatGPT search, AI spending by tech giants, CH Robinson, uh, AI, I don't know if these are valid or not. I mean, that has the sources here, so I could double check this. Uh, yeah, October 31st, 2024. So it's pulling in sources on today's date. That is the AI news today that I asked for. I like how it formats it here with perplexity. You can ask follow-up questions. How is OpenAI's ChatGPT search expected to compete with Google and Bing? That's a really popular question. And if we hop over to search GPT, here was, it respond, here's, here was its response to the news prompt. Sorry, I can't talk now. Uh, but it says today, October 31st. So that's good. It, it said today's date. So significant developments have emerged in the field of artificial intelligence. Right away, OpenAI launches AI-powered search. And if you click this, it gives you a source, just like Perplexity did. And if we come down, Google integrates generative AI into maps, uh, Amazon, fashion, uh, Apple revenue boosted by AI integration. Let's see if this was today. Uh, and it looks like it was. So all of these stories are related to the AI news of today, like I asked for. So chat GPT or search GPT, excuse me, and perplexity definitely get the nod here. I'm honestly kind of shocked that an AI overview uh, didn't give me what I was looking for. Maybe there's something wrong with my account. I need to go on a private browser. Uh, I'm not really sure how this works, but definitely chat GPT with search GPT and perplexity get the nod for recency and news related prompts as of this video. Now I want to do another quick recency one, and this is more financial related as there's a lot of financial queries about what is the price of this stock? What is the price of Bitcoin, right? Things of that nature. So I'm going to ask this really quickly. What is the price of Apple stock today? I'm going to do the same thing with perplexity, and then I'm going to come over to Google and copy and paste the exact same thing. So right away, I'm not sure if this is AI overviews. Google's always done this, and I like their interface when presenting financial information. Uh, very easy to read there. Perplexity also populates a chart here, so that's accurate. I like this. I mean, it looks very similar to what you get with Google. Has a little explanation. You can ask related questions. And then search GPT. This is really cool now. It has its own integrated or in a chart integrated 
integrated inside its search result, similar to Google and Perplexity. It has the five day, one month, six month, one year, five year, year to date. Uh, then it gives you a little snippet right here. It gives you a source. Uh, I could probably come in and ask it something like, should I buy it? And I'm going to see if it's probably going to say I'm not an advisor. Uh, let's see here. Careful considerations, positive, negative outlook, conclusion, investing Apple stock. Let's see here. It's advisable to consult with a financial advisor. Yeah, I figured it would give me something like that. I was just trying to push it a little bit. All right, so for this next example, I'm gonna do an informational search. And so what I mean by this is I'm gonna ask all these search engines an informational question. Which tech companies are winning the AI race? There's obviously gonna be some bias here, so I'm curious to see what the responses are gonna be. So I'm gonna copy and paste this, come back to perplexity, paste it in perplexity, come back to Google, paste it today. And then here it's generating an AI overview. Let's start here. Multiple companies are leading the AI race, including NVIDIA, Microsoft, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, Google Cloud, ASML. What's really interesting is they ranked their own product below all of these other big tech companies. So I find that to be really interesting. Other companies, so here's some other ones. Uh, and then it has some sources here on the right. Uh, I'm not really sure yet. That's from last year, last year. So these aren't really relevant or recent in my opinion. Um, so if this is just a quick rundown, this is accurate by any means. By no means is this not accurate. I'm shocked OpenAI is not on this list. Uh, so if we come to perplexity, based on the results, leading AI companies. Yeah, Microsoft, OpenAI, Google, NVIDIA, Amazon Web Services. And then it lists Anthropic. I like to see that. IBM, Meta. I like to see Meta. They're definitely a leader. Um, and then it gives you key factors. You can ask it other questions. I like this response. This is definitely a good response. Uh, this one too, right here. So it says, which tech companies are winning? Microsoft, Google Alphabet, NVIDIA, Meta, formerly Facebook. And then this is interesting too. It ranks its own company, OpenAI, towards the bottom of this list. And then it has all these sources. And if I click this, it'll pop over to the right here. So it gives you all these different sources that you could click into and learn more about this. But really interesting to see that. I'm not, I mean, all of these are fine. They're definitely quick responses and they're accurate. They're not inaccurate by any means. Uh, just really interesting to see the different layouts for each one. I think all of those answered the question sufficiently, in my opinion. So now I'm going to ask a transactional search. And what I mean by transactional is my intent is to potentially purchase something from the internet. So what I'm going to ask is what are the best VPNs for Mac? I was recently looking into this. I have a Mac. I'm interested in looking into VPNs or virtual private networks. So I'm gonna ask all three of these search engines and then analyze the different results for a transactional query. So there's search GPT. I'm gonna come over to perplexity. And then I'm gonna come over to Google. I don't know why it signed into my email there. I'm gonna come over to Google. And then here, what's interesting is there's no AI overview prompted for this transactional search. But instead, oh, there is right here. You had to scroll down. So instead, we had three ads. And that's a really important call out is that on Google, obviously, search ads make up a majority of its revenue for Alphabet. So three different ads here. Not surprised to see that. But if you come to perplexity, this is one of the selling points of using something like perplexity or even search GPT right now. There are no search ads. Now, I saw perplexity is going to add that eventually at some point. I'm really curious to see what OpenAI is going to do when it comes to search ads within search GPT. But as of this video, you'll see three big, big ads right here. And if you're on mobile, this is above the fold. So you have to scroll down to even get to an organic result. And then we have the AI overview. Some of the best VPNs for Mac include NordVPN, Surfshark, Express. Those are all quality VPNs and they have some sources here, Surfshark, Nord. Uh, what's really interesting is that they have a, a YouTube video that's not even live anymore. It looks like it got shut down. So yeah, video unavailable. I'm not sure why they're showing that in the AI overview. That's a really good question. Um, but if we come back to perplexity, again, no ads. That's really good to see. Uh, similar sources, it has even more sources than what Google showed in that AI overview. Now, obviously, if you scroll past the AI overview, then we'll start to see more results here. But right here is the sources on perplexity. Uh, based on the results, here are the recommended VPN. So then it lists Nord. But I, what I like about this is it lists different bullet points under each one for why it's the best VPN for Mac. Where in Google, it just listed it, right? There was one little sentence of an explanation. An overall top VPN, a VPN with a good interface. Here there's a little more details behind this. It lists the top five, gives some other VPNs. You can ask related questions if you want. If we come over to search GPT, I really like this interface, actually. You can come over here and click sources. If I scroll down, you can click sources on the right. Uh, so you can see more sources here for this search. 
Um, but it does lay out the popular VPNs for Mac. We have NordVPN, ExpressVPN, Surfshark. I personally use Surfshark, uh, ProtonVPN, VPN, and it has a source for each one. And it has a little snippet at the bottom uh, about when choosing a VPN, consider your needs. And again, you can look at the citations here on the right for more details. So honestly, guys, I like this here in Search GPT. I like this search results. It looks clean. It's easy to navigate. It's easy to look at more sources, more unbiased sources, in my opinion. There's no ads uh, versus perplexity, which is fine. I think it got the job done for that query. Very disappointed in what I got here uh, from Google AI overviews. Three ads on top, a broken YouTube video, and a measly description of each one of if I'm actually looking for a VPN for my Mac. So Google lost this one. I would say search GPT definitely won this transactional search. Perplexity's answer was just fine, uh, but that's the transactional search that I just wanted to show you. Again, you could search anything transactional. Your results might be different. That's just one example that I wanted to show you. All right, so in this last example, I'm gonna do a search that has local intent. So local intent meaning coffee shop near me, tire shop near me, uh, best restaurants in Des Moines, Iowa, right? Any search like that that has some sort of local intent, I wanna see what search GPT can do compared to Google and also perplexity. So in this example, I'm gonna do something like best coffee shops near me. I'm on perplexity right now, so I'm gonna click go, come over to search GPT, paste it in there, and then go to Google, of course, as this is the number one search engine, not just for local searches, but for everything. And I do really like the results that Google gives for local intent searches. Now, there is no AI overviews, which I expected. It gives you the map pack right here. Uh, it gives you some different places. Some usually pay for this, but it looks like in this instance, there's just organic listings. And then you have your Yelp, your TripAdvisor, right? Sites like that. And if you click more places, I really like this interface of Google Maps, right? I can look through all these different companies I like how it has the star ratings right here on the map so I can narrow it down that way. And if you click on a company here, you can get directions, uh, you can call them, you can go to their website, you can look at all the reviews, sometimes you can even order online depending on what you're searching, right? So I really like this interface that Google has for local intent searches and I think it's going to be hard to beat, honestly. So if we go to perplexity, Let's see what they have for local searches. So uh, top rated coffee shops, it just gives you like a listicle format. There's no, or there is a map up here. So I didn't realize that there's a map on the top right. If I click view, I don't know if this is new. I mean, let me know in the comments below. I don't think I've ever done a local search on perplexity. Um, so Daisy Chain. So I'm not sure where they're pulling these reviews from. Oh, Yelp. So it looks like it's pulling from Yelp. So if I click this view on Yelp, uh, so it gives you the hours. I'm not sure if is it actually linking to the website. So I don't know if I can go to the website or not. It looks like I can just only go to the Yelp page. So not bad. I like how they have the map, but I don't like how you can't actually go to the website of a certain company. Um, and they do just have a, a typical listicle format here. So nothing special in my opinion, but that's cool that they have the map. And if we go to search GPT, I really like this. This is similar to Google. Obviously, I'd have to give the nod here to Google Maps probably. Just very sophisticated, really advanced layout with all the features and reviews and everything that they do for local searches. Uh, but I can't, I can't sneeze at this, guys. This is good too, right? So if we look down here, you can click sources. This is just your typical citations that we've seen in the other examples. Um, but if I scroll around, I can click list. So this looks like the map pack. Actually, what I don't like about this is it only has three options. So best coffee shops near me on Google, there's 20 options here. On perplexity, there's looks like 10 or so options here. If I click this, yeah, 10 or so. And on this, it's only giving me three options for coffee shops. Now, obviously, I am located around here. Let's see if I scroll around if it's going to populate any more. Um, I'm not sure it's going to do that. I can't zoom in. I can't zoom out. Um, but yeah, that's really interesting how it only gives three results. I'm actually going to try another quick one here. Let's do best coffee shops in Des Moines, Iowa. And let's see what this comes up with versus just the coffee shops near me. I'm curious if there's going to be more results instead of just three. So it says Des Moines boasts a vibrant coffee scene with numerous establishments. So here we go, right? So this, it looks like it lists 10 different results. So if you do actual city, it's going to provide you with more local results versus just a near me. And so if we zoom in, actually, I don't know if you can zoom in, like I just mentioned earlier, but if you click around here, uh, it's similar to what you see on Google, right? Horizon line, they are a good coffee shop. Uh, so directions, website, call. So if it looks like it goes straight to their website in a new tab, if I click directions, this actually opens Google. So that's really interesting. 
I'm curious to see if OpenAI is going to get some sort of map integrations eventually. Who knows? And if I click call, it's going to open up FaceTime. Or if you're on your phone, it'll prompt it that way. Um, really interesting. So reviews, I'm not sure where it's getting this. I don't know if it's pulling it in from Yelp or Google. Um, but right away, honestly, I'd have to give the nod to Google here. I don't think anyone, or I don't think search GPT or perplexity is going to be threatening Google anytime soon when it comes to local intent searches. But that's just my two cents on local intent. This is still pretty impressive, honestly, for a first take in terms of what search GPT is giving me. I just think they have a long way to go when it comes to local intent searches. Now, I realized after recording all of this, I forgot to mention Microsoft Bing or Copilot as their AI powered search engine technically. So if you go to Bing and you click Copilot up top, this will launch Microsoft Copilot. So I'm gonna do one quick example and just see how it compares to the other ones, right? Let's do a transactional, best VPNs for Mac. And I'm gonna see what Copilot comes up with. So it says, uh, looks like a listicle format. It links off to the source, has the sources down here. So again, nothing really great in my opinion. Uh, so if we go to Copilot again, let's go to Copilot. Let's do best coffee shops in Des Moines, Iowa. And I'm guessing it's going to use Bing Maps for this, but let's see what happens here. So it's giving me a listicle here, um, catch Des Moines. So it's giving me sources. So it didn't give me a map pack, which I don't like. So I just wanted to show that really quickly. And not that I forgot about Microsoft Bing or Copilot. I just think that these other three search engines, Perplexity, Google, and then Search GPT are superior to what we're seeing with Microsoft Bing or Microsoft Copilot. But that's enough of me rambling. I want to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. Do you prefer the search results of Search GPT, Perplexity, Google AI Overviews, Microsoft Bing slash Copilot, if you want to throw them in the mix? I want to hear what you guys have to say about all of this. So again, I appreciate you. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you found value. And again, if you want to know what my favorite AI tools and prompts are that I'm using right now for marketing and content creation, you can find my AI marketing essentials guide below this video. But most importantly, I hope you all have a great day.